Welcome to Broken Bushcraft. Today we're going to talk about um, how to make an at-home Faraday bag. Now what is a Faraday bag? Well, you see I got my tinfoil hat on here. It's to protect you or your devices from um, outside interference, outside signals. So we're going to protect, well this is not my device, this is my daughter's device, but we're going to protect this device from outside interference. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share, and let's kick this off. So we're making a Faraday can and a Faraday box. Now what is a Faraday um, can or box? Well, it's an object used to shield your devices from uh, radio waves, electromagnetic pulses. It'll protect them uh, from outside interference. Now uh, EMP, if EMP went off, you have to think about all the fine-tuned electronics we have in our lives. From coffee pots to cell phones to TVs, um, everything that we have our cars or have fine-tuned uh, chips in them so almost like a fine-tuned chip like me but um those things will shut down so how do you protect it well i keep a lot of stuff on hard drive and a lot of books i download um, a lot of videos and stuff that i have and how do i protect that from an emp so we ha I have that knowledge later on well you have to make a box big enough for the um, hard drive also the computer and the stuff that goes with it. And then if you have a solar power um, charger, you can kind of get through with that. So that should be fun. Now, um, some things you need to think about when you have, when you're doing a Faraday. The outside has to be a conductive metal. Now, um, aluminum foil works great. I got this paint can. I'm gonna see if this works. It may or may not work. Uh, I also have tin tape, because any uh, holes in here, like the seam, will allow it to get in. So we're going to have to seal that all up. So we'll work on the can first and then we'll work on the shoe box. Um, the whole budget for this was about 30 bucks for all this. And you can make a couple of these Faraday boxes and bags. So let's work on the can first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this off because we don't need this at all. Now there are holes here and you can see inside there's a little dimple there. So we're going to cover that and cover the inside with the tin tape. Also, we're gonna cover this seam and we're gonna run a bit around the bottom here. So we're gonna put some tape inside there. So we taped the inside, we got tape there, there, and the seam is taped inside and outside. Now, these seams are pretty good, um, especially here because it's metal touching metal, so it, it should hold it really well. Now what you have to do is, because you can't just throw your device in here, because if it's touching the metal, then basically it's just gonna conduct into the device. So we have to provide a barrier for it. And to do that, we're gonna wrap it in plastic to prevent moisture or any kind of, um, anything happening to it, it's just an extra layer. And then cardboard is actually gonna be stuffed down in here. So I'm gonna cut this cardboard up and we're gonna make like a bucket inside of here, cardboard, to buffer against the metal touching the device. So we cut the, the cardboard up and basically made a cradle inside so it's not, so none of the metal is gonna to be touching our object. That's the most important thing. You wanna make sure these seams and stuff are all closed up. So there's no metal touching the object that's gonna go in here, which will be my cell phone. There you go. We have our device we're gonna put into our Faraday can. Now, when we put this in here, we're gonna wrap it in plastic, tin foil, plastic, tin foil. That will offer it a greater degree of EMP protection. Now, I'm gonna reuse, for the plastic, I'm gonna reuse a shipping bag from a large shipping company that all of us use, probably on a daily basis. Um, or you can buy plastic sheets, cut them up, and use them however. You just wanna make sure that the no moisture gets into this just in case. And there it is. We have two layers of plastic protecting it from any kind of moisture. And we have two layers of tin foil. You can even go more if you want. Um, and then we'll just set this in here, cap it, seal it up real tight, and then it's ready to go. We've already tested this. Um, it's been successful every test we've done. So the way to test these is you can obviously call the cell phone and then when you unwrap the cell phone, you should see that the phone says 
like VPN or no signal, something like that. If you are going to store your phones in Faraday cans, like at night or something like that, uh, make sure you put them in airplane mode. Otherwise, they're going to just search for signal and they're going to die fairly quick. So, that's the Faraday can. So, now we're going to work on our Faraday box. Now, the Faraday box can be any kind of box you want metal, um, it can be a shoe box, it can be plastic, wood. It's up to you. Um, it's just the shape of the box. You're going to be coating this thing or covering this thing in three layers of tin foil um, and plastic. So this will actually protect the box from moisture. <clears throat> Plus you have whatever is inside protected from moisture. So it's going to go uh, plastic, aluminum foil, plastic, aluminum foil, plastic, aluminum foil. And we're going to cover up any of these seams. Now something when considering a box is how does it open? Do you have to, if it's one of the standard boxes that you have to kind of open up from the top, then every time you open it, you have to cut that seam. Um, something like this, where the seam will be fitting to it, that this is fine. Um, or one that you can lift the top off, you know, like a standard shoe box that you can lift the top off. Those work great too. So you just have to think about how often you'll be going into this thing. If you're using this for everyday storage, something like this may be better for you or something that's easier access. So let's wrap this in, in the plastic aluminum foil and then we'll see how it looks. So here's the box. It's fully complete, fully covered in aluminum foil and plastic. I've trimmed up the inside so it's you have space in there. Now, any seam you have for this, now what I did, I took for these seams here and here, I put used the tin tape. Um, any seams that you have, you're going to want to put tin tape on those two, so it's closing this about this box fully off. Now, the inside of this box, I do have some foam here. However, I found a box that fits perfectly in there. So if I didn't have this, I would line this with cardboard or whatever else. Um, just like we did for the uh, can. So I got my phone. It's still wrapped up. So I'm going to take my device. I'm going to put it in my little box here. Seal this up. Nice and tight. And drop it in my Faraday cage. Now this is pretty tight. Now I don't want this top to pop up. This is obviously it can pop up pretty easy. Um, it has a good seal, but Murphy's Law, something bad will happen. What I can do is I can run tape here if I'm just going to not use this for a long time. Um, or I can just store it upside down, place something on top of it to prevent it from um, accidentally opening up. I've already tested this. So once again, the device inside isn't getting any signal, isn't transmitting any signal back. Now some of you are thinking, Adam, I don't want to mess with this stuff. I got you, boo. Don't worry. They make this Faraday material, um, which is made out of nickel and copper, and blocks from blocks signals from RF signals, EMI, EMF, and LF blocking, and it's fairly inexpensive. So those are two ways to do a Faraday box, Faraday cage. Another simple way to do it is by take a potato chip bag. It has the foil on the inside, turn the bag inside out, throw your cell phone in there, wrap that bag real tight, and that may provide enough protection from outside radio interference. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you in the woods.